this is Signs of the Times with Patrick O'Kay. With Patrick O'Kay on Radio One, One Hundred Three Point Five FM. Hi, thank you for tuning in to the Signs of the Times. We want to thank all of you who have indicated your interest in the topics we've treated so far. We started by telling you that the world is not as you think it is. Many things are happening underground of which you are not aware. There is evil everywhere. People are just doing what they like without thinking of what the Almighty Creator who orders everything thinks or want us to do. We have been swept away by the philosophy of the world. We forget that the Creator has a design, and we must follow this design if we are to achieve our purpose in life. Look around you. Do you see any goodness? Look around you. Do you see people who still consider that goodness is an attribute to be emulated or sought after? You look around you and see that everyone is for himself. Nobody cares about another person. Everybody is on the right race. Does this look to you like the world God created, where He wants you to be happy, but also wants you to know that there is a greater place that you can achieve all your desires, a place where you will want for nothing, a place where all your happiness will be assured, and that is heaven. In this series, we've tried to open your eyes to some of the things that are happening around you which you do not notice. Last week, we started to tell you about the help you can expect from God's angels. You may wonder, why are we talking about angels at this time? If you're a Christian, then you probably are familiar with the Bible. In the book of Revelations, it says the battle of the end times is in the hands of the angels. The angels are messengers of God, who are just eager to do God's will, because it is the best, and they're there to lead you every day, so that you can achieve your ultimate purpose in life. That is to achieve one with God, and in this you realize your eternal happiness. We told you last week, and we're very happy to note that many people responded to our program on the angels. They are blessed because you have to have a heart that is open to understand the real issues at stake. We told you about the seven archangels, that is the seven spirits who stand before the throne of God. We told you that there are Saint Michael, Saint Gabriel, Saint Raphael, Saint Uriel, Saint Yehudiel, Saint Siltiel, and Saint Barakel. These are the seven archangels who stand before the throne of God. If you're familiar with the book of Tobit, the holy archangel Raphael told the younger Tobias that he is one of the seven who stands before the throne of God. Now, the seven archangels are ready to help you because this is their time. God has given to them the power over all creation and the power to defend all those who call upon them. Do not forget, there is only one condition between you and obtaining anything you want from God. God says, you must ask. So, when was the last time you called on your guardian angel to help you? Many people are not aware anymore about the existence of the angels, but they are all around us. You can't see them, but they are there. They are there to help you, to protect you, to help you to work out your salvation. 
Science of the Times. Science of the Times. Science of the Times. Science of the Times. Do you really want to know what is happening behind the scenes in the world? Do you really want to know who is shaping the world at this moment? Do you really want to know the decisions you're making based on manipulation? Then join the Science of the Times with Patrick Oki. You can get in touch with us on 080 333 99992 That's 080 333 99992 or Awareness at gmail.com Be wise. In our last program, we told you about five of them. Now, we complete the series by telling you about the two other great archangels who stand before the throne of God. The sixth angel who stands before the throne of God is the holy archangel Saint Siltiel. Saint Siltiel means the prayer of God. That Saint Siltiel is the one that prays for all of us. He collects all our prayers and offers them to God. If you look in the book of Revelations, it tells you about the angel that offers the prayers of all the saints to God with his incense. The prayers of all the saints collected are offered to God on our behalf by the holy archangel, Saint Siltiel. Saint Siltiel is the one that teaches us how to pray well. He is the one that admonishes us nicely and gently how to pray to God. You may say, well, I pray to God every day. I talk to Him every day. I say what is in my mind to God every day. So why do I need to learn how to pray to God? Well, God is order. He is love, but He is order. Anything to do with God has order. Saint Siltia helps us to pray the kind of prayers that God wants to hear from us. There is nothing wrong if you, in quiet meditation, sit down and just imagine God and talk to Him heart to heart. He listens. God wants your heart to beat in unison with His. Jesus always calls you to be united to this heart. Your heartbeat resonates with God's heartbeat. You can talk to Him in the depth of your heart, discuss with Him anything you want. But when it comes to formal prayers, God always insists on how you are to address Him. You think, for example, the apostles were praying with Jesus all those years He was with them, but somehow they knew that since Jesus is God, he knows the kind of words God wants to be addressed with. So they asked him, How shall we pray? And Jesus did not berate them for asking. He understood. And in fact, the question that came from the apostles was inspired by the Holy Spirit. So he says to them, This is how you shall pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Now Jesus told them not to make noise and rattle like the pagans do, because before they kneel down to pray, God knows what they're going to ask. So Jesus advises that they should go out of the crowd and kneel down to pray. Now there are two ways to go out of the crowd. You can actually physically go out of the crowd and pray, or you can actually be in the midst of the crowd and still go out mentally in your mind to pray. 
most of the holy people you hear about today were adept at doing that. They would be in the midst of people, yet their hearts are with God. That is the going away to pray. You shut your mind off from the crowd, and in your heart, you're in union with God, and you pray. And Jesus says, even before you kneel to pray, God knows what you're going to ask for. That you may wonder also, why did the apostles have to ask Jesus? They already prayed. But they knew that Jesus being God knows the kind of words that God wants to hear from his children. He knows the words that touch the heart of God. So he told them the words in the Our Father. This is why all of us should learn what kind of words does God want to hear from us? How does he want us to be disposed so he can listen to our prayers? The Bible tells us that the prayer of the humble pierces heaven. You know the prayer of the publican and the Pharisee in the Bible. The publican was so humble he felt himself unworthy to even speak to God. Whereas the Pharisee was out there in front, rattling away, I have fasted, I have done this, I have done that, so God you must listen to me. But the publican was at the back of the synagogue, barely speaking, so unworthy of himself. He was humble. And the Bible tells us that the prayer of the publican was justified. In these days, Christians want to command God. They want to tell God what to do for them. God must listen to what they want because the Bible says whatever you decree, God will give it to you. So you have become your own God. You decree to God what God must do to you without asking for his will. This is the modern Christianity. That is why so many prayers, so many revivals, so many sessions of praise worship are going on all over the world and the world has not changed one bit. It's passed to evil, grows stronger every day because people are not praying properly. They are praying for themselves. They are not praying to God. God says, you must be humble. You must pray with love and trust. And your prayer must be like Jesus' prayer. Let your will be done, not mine. Many Christians are on their way to hell, but they actually believe that they pray. If you do not pray with humility, your prayers are an empty noise, and it just bounces off the clouds of heaven and returns back right to you. Because God says in the Bible, I will turn my back on the proud. So St. Siltiel, whose name means the prayer of God, teaches us how to pray with gentleness, kindness, love, trust in God's mercy, and most of all, with humility. God turns his back on the proud. So all over the world, many Christians are praying proud prayers, prayers that make them want to think they are God. God must do what they want otherwise. God would not listen to such prayers. Jesus prayed in the Garden of Gethsemane, Father, if this chalice can be taken from me, but not my will, but thine be done. So you're supposed to pray to ask for what you want. But at the end, you must always have it in mind, Father, but may your will be done, because God's will is supreme. He sees you from the time your soul was created to the day you will die. He knows what is good for you and is ready to provide it. But sometimes you think you know what is good for you, so you forcefully want to force God to answer your prayers. Whereas God, out of his love and ultimate knowledge, knows what is good for you and is only what is good for you that he wants to grant to you. So you can't force God to accept your will. At the end of your request, you must say, Father, like Jesus did, but 
May your will be done, not mine. You're listening to The Science of the Times. You can call us right now on 080-333-99992. That is 080-333-99992. So when you pray and God doesn't answer you immediately, don't forget there are three answers to a prayer. One can be yes, one can be no, and the third can be wait a minute. But nowadays, Christians are not ready to wait. God must answer them immediately. And many Christians are not willing to take no for an answer. If you think you're praying, then you must depend on God to give you the answer that is suitable to your prayers. But always remember, every prayer you pray from the heart is answered by God. He may not answer the prayer the way you want, because in your limited understanding you see and know nothing. God knows all. He knows what is best for you at any given time. You may not be aware of this. And that is why at the end you must say, But Father, your will be done, not mine. How many Christians are still praying properly? St. Siltiel, the glorious archangel, whose name means the prayer of God, if you call on him, will help you to pray the kind of prayers God wants to hear from you. St. Siltiel has five billion angels ready to help you. When you ask him, one of his angels would be with you to help you to pray well. St. Siltiel is also the opposite of the Archdemon, the demon bell figure. The demon fell figure, as I told you the other day, is the demon of gluttony. He is the one who always wants you to have pleasure, to enjoy yourself, to eat anything you like, just to live a life based on pleasure. He is the one that promotes all the kind of addictions that you can't get out of. Drinking too much, partying too much, doing all kinds of pleasurable things too much and is also the one that wants you to enjoy even worship. Worship has to become what you want, not what God wants. You go out there, you enjoy yourself, you clap and dance, you have a good time and then you pretend that it's God you're worshipping. God is not interested in that kind of worship. The Bible tells us that friendship with the world is enmity with God. If you're out there just hoping to enjoy yourself, even in worship, where you dance, you clap, you do all kinds of things to enjoy yourself, then you say you're worshiping God, that is totally contrary to the sense of worship which was given to us in the Bible. The Bible says, the battle you and I have is how to overcome our human nature. When you go to extol your human nature in front of God, and then you say you're worshipping Him, that's the worst kind of prayer you can pray to God. The Bible says, God says in the scriptures, do not come and extol your carnal nature before me. In prayer, you're supposed to be humble, recollected, meditative, not riotous, clapping all over the place. That's the worship of Belial, the worship of the devil. He is the one that promotes euphoria, glossolalia, and all kinds of physical manifestations of bodily movements and all kinds of things because Satan wants to promote you and your body. He wants to give you things that you enjoy in the worship of God. Look at all these things. Look at all the holy people. Where did you ever see that St. Peter and Paul danced in worship? I know you would tell me, Psalm 51 says, Praise God with cymbals and harps. Or David danced. Did David dance in the synagogue? David danced to celebrate the return of the ark to David's city. He danced on the streets. Then the Bible tells us in Kings, 
that the ark was laid quietly in the home of Abednego, and the ark quietly blessed the house until David became jealous. There was never a talk in the Bible of David dancing in the synagogue, which most Christians do today and call it worship. Read your scriptures very well. So, a man of God or a woman of God prays quietly, trusting that God is hearing him even before he kneels to pray. His heart beats with God's heart. God created our hearts after his own, and he wants every heartbeat of ours to be in union with him. In this, deep resonates to deep, and we understand each other. Once you get riotous, God is not there, whether you believe me or not. There's no single saint in the Bible who was involved in riotous worship. Satan has convoluted everything to please him, but deceives you that the Bible says this and the Bible says that. The Bible says we must practice the faith as the elders handed it to us. Ephesians says we must practice the faith as the apostles gave it to us. Where did you ever hear that St. Peter and Paul, James and John, Philip and Bartholomew were dancing in worship? So St. Sylvia, the archangel of prayer, if you call on him, will help you to pray well and will help you to avoid the spirit of hedonism. Hedonism means the love of pleasure gluttony and all kinds of things which we ourselves now indulge in. Now, the next angel after St. Siltiel is St. Barakel. St. Barakel is the seventh of the seven spirits that stand before the throne of God. St. Barakel means the blessing of God. What is his job? St. Barakel makes sure that as a parent, you bring up your children in the way God wants you to bring them up. All of us have children, and we think they belong to us. They do not belong to us. All our children belong to God. He has given us charge over them to guide them to Him. Many parents will go to hell because they neglected the salvation of the souls of their children. Many parents always try to make sure their children have the best education, the best medical care, they go to the best schools, they enjoy the best facilities, they buy for them iPad, iPhone, iFog, iGuilty. They let them watch anything on TV that they like. They let them listen to all kinds of music, corrupting their minds. God is going to require from you every child that he has given you. He is going to ask you, what did you do to make sure this child come back to me? You just are there making sure they, they, they have the best degrees, they go to the best universities. Which part of God did you put in them? First, by teaching them, the Bible says, instruct the children the way they should be, and when they grow, they will not depart. How many of God have you put into your children? Your salvation depends on it. That is why St. Barakel is the one that will remind you that as a parent, your first duty is to bring your children back to God. If you fail in this duty, no matter what you do, even if they become governors, you will be held accountable for their souls. No heaven for you, my child, if your children have lost God and you've done nothing to bring them to God. St. Barakil is the blessing of God. He always reminds parents of their duty to bring up their children to God. St. Barakil helps broken marriages. He makes sure that your family is a happy family. He brings God's blessings on every family if you call on him. He is there waiting to be called on. So St. Barakil the seventh of the seven archangels who stand before the throne of God. Call on him in any difficulty in your marriage. He meant them like that, just like that. Call on him, St. Barakel. You'll be glad you did. 
Thank you very much. That rounds up our series on the seven archangels who stand before the throne of God and their work against the seven arch demons. Just to tell you that St. Barakel opposes the demon Asteros, who is the demon of lukewarmness towards anything to do with God. He is the demon of sloth. He has pervaded all the young people in this our age to make them believe that anything to do with God is old-fashioned or they will not be held accountable for their actions before God. He has touched their hearts to be lukewarm towards anything to do with God. If you want their favor to be reanimated, then call on the Holy Archangel, St. Barakel. He'll be there. He comes swiftly when you call on him to protect your children from the modern paganism that is now pervading the world. My friend, this is the time of the seven archangels and all the angels of God who are ready now to do battle with the evil spirits to liberate you from the clutches of Satan and set you free for the glorious kingdom of God. Thank you for listening. We welcome all your comments and your inquiries. Now let me leave you with a prayer that Satan fears. Saint Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our safeguard against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May the Lord rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Hosts, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all his evil spirits who roam the world looking for the ruin of souls. Now Satan fears that prayer, and each time you say it, St. Michael comes with his legions to protect you instantly. Next week, we shall give you another powerful prayer that binds all the demons and the seven arch demons. So see you next week. Please join me for The Signs of the Times every Wednesday at 10.30 p.m. and every Sunday at the same time. The Signs of the Times. Thank you for listening. You can call us right now on 080-333-99992 or 080-3490-5104 or 080-490-5104 or email us on marianawareness at gmail.com That is 080-333-99992 9992 or 081 888 758 78 or email us on marianawareness at gmail.com